what's up everyone thank you for joining me on the being beautifully honest channel and we are going to have a reality chat and this is actually going to be a little bit about the real housewives of atlanta but more so and specifically it's going to be about latoya who is a friend to the show and she's been on this season 13 just really showing just really showing out and I don't do reviews about the show. Every once in a while, I might, you know, say something in regards to something that happened on the show. From time to time, I, I do, I have been watching it. It hasn't been very eventful, but I do have my opinions about it. And I did do a reality chat where I, in the beginning of the season running, I asked like, was LaToya too juicy for Peach? And in my opinion, I just felt like she's just doing a bit too much and it just seems like she was just a bit too thirsty and it came across just like very it, it looked uncomfortable to watch it because just sh from the word go straight out of the gates she was coming for drew sedora and you know just really turning up and it, it's, it's just been a bit too much for my taste but again this is my opinion on my channel and i'm just sharing my opinion as beautifully honest as i know how without trying to be disparaging i just really feel like what direction or whatever direction bravo is trying to take the real housewives into I get it, they're trying to maybe get some of the older blood out and get the newer blood in, but I think that having LaToya not knocking anybody who is a quote unquote YouTuber, even though I have a YouTube channel and I create content, I do this part time, I don't consider myself a YouTuber, I am a full time, very bu busy entrepreneur and I'm grateful and thankful to do that, but I do like to share my commentary from time to time on things that I see. It is not an easy thing to be a YouTube personality, and she has been doing that for many, many years, so I give her kudos for that. But I think Real Housewives was trying to maybe do some type of experiment when it comes to bringing on a reality, not, not a, bringing someone from the internet into reality TV to see how that crossover would work. I feel like it was an experiment that didn't really go well. And these are just my opinions on it based on the things that I've been seeing with her really just going over the top on this show. Like on the most couple of recent episodes, it's been uncomfortable to see her interact with the ladies, her and Drew Sedora seem to really go, you know, head to head a lot. And I don't believe that Drew in the beginning really did anything to warrant LaToya acting the way that she was acting towards Drew. Now, I don't know what, you know, it's supposed to be an unscripted show, but we know that they do encourage certain interactions on happening. That's why there will be meetups with this person and that person to go shopping or this person and that person to go out for drinks and you know and then this housewife and that friend of the show and that you know housewife is meeting up at the lingerie shop to go shopping like it's like forced interactions they're not really friends just living their lives doing stuff and the cameras are rolling and following them they don't do that type of stuff anymore. They used to do that stuff many, many, many years ago, like maybe like in the early days of the real world and, you know, and stuff like that. But now it is scripted reality where they are creating the scenes and creating the interactions to see how things are going to play out with, you know, with the different people. And with LaToya, it was just straight out the gate. You know, she called the wig that Drew was wearing a pet. She said that she's wearing a pet on her head. She just, you know, was very uncomfortably commenting in a, you know, sarcastic way about the food that Cynthia had at her house when they had some of the ladies over. She was turning up in Cynthia's living room. And at the time, this was before Cynthia got married, Mark, I think his name is Mark, whatever his name is. <laughs> Mike, shoot, I can't remember his name. 
Mike, he came down and you could tell that the look that he had on his face when LaToya was turning out with Kenya, who is probably close to old enough to being LaToya's, you know, aunt or maybe a young mom, <laughs> it was very uncomfortable to watch. But with the makeout sessions in the the beach house in Kiowa when they were in South Carolina for Cynthia's bachelorette party and you know all of that stuff it, it was just very weird and uncomfortable because one she had this or has this YouTube channel where she created uh, a story around her life going through pregnancy and having children and being married and now she's divorced and her now ex-husband Adam Ali, he was just recently interviewed by Tasha K on the Unwind with Tasha K Patreon. It's not on her YouTube channel. And I actually did watch the video. I subscribed to her Patreon because I was actually interested in seeing the receipts from the Derek Jackson um, <laughs> saga. So that was a little bonus that I was not expecting. And I was like, hmm. So I listened to the interview on this past weekend while I was working. And it revealed a lot of things that was just like confirmation for me about a lot of the interactions that LaToya is having on the show. Because honestly, looking at her on the show, a lot of it just really comes across as uncomfortable and forced and like she's trying to play a persona and also trying to secure and solidify her spot on the show in hopes of gaining a peach and becoming a peach holder. So we all know that Kenya, she is the villain of the show, whether she wants to be or not. And you either love Kenya or you hate Kenya. And there may be a little bit of space in between. I don't hate Kenya. I'm not a stan for Kenya either, but I see the good in her. And I also see the stuff that's like, really Kenya, why, why are you doing that? And it makes it hard for people who really want to root for her to root for her and be on her side. Because when you do root for her, then people will call up, well, what about when she does this? And what about when she does that? And it's like, I feel like Kenya, as long as she's been doing it and as old as she is, Kenya is a very intelligent and bright woman and she is playing a character on this show. She may not have ever been an A-list actress, but she has been in a lot of television shows and movie, you know, movies. Be they all, you know, bit parts and small pieces, she has experience in acting. And she knew what it took to be a part of this show. And a lot of things that played out with the things with her and Apollo and Phaedra Parks and just other stuff that has happened on the show with the number of different people that she has dated and all of this other stuff. And I'll maybe talk about some of those things in another episode because I'm not trying to make this about Kenya. It has secured her spot on the show. So I feel like in a way, LaToya was trying to emulate some of the things that she thought about Kenya and maybe like if I'm this way, then that will solidify me being on the show and I will be a either a peach holder, which is what she really, be, I believe, wants to be, or a longtime friend of the show like Marlo Hampton has been. But either way, securing her spot. Now she's done a good job of doing that because obviously a lot of us are talking about her, like I'm sitting here talking about her right now. But I really am talking about this because after listening to the interview that Adam Ali did on the Unwind with Tasha K Patreon account, and I'm not gonna share all of the details about that because I respect that is, you know, her platform and you do have to pay to see the content that's on there if it hasn't been shared on a public platform. So I'm not gonna give a breakdown of that interview, but what I am going to say is that a number of the things that were discussed and that he talked about in this interview, it was confirmation for me that she really is, she, she really is turning up in hopes of like, this is what she wants to be. This is what she wants to do. And that has been the goal all along from her creating the vlog and sharing her life and creating, you know, this, this lifestyle channel. That was what she really wanted to do. And 
And with Adam, he he kind of even, you know, just was like, yeah, I'm just kind of like done with her. We are co-parenting, but he doesn't really seem like he really cares that much and he's not pressed. So I, I didn't see or detect anything that he said where it was like he was on some get back or this is a revenge interview because he's mad that she's getting more recognition and more, you know, more fame or, you know, whatever it is that you want to call it. I didn't pick that up about him because to be honest with you, she already had more followers than him on social media, more subscribers to her YouTube channel. He he didn't strike me as somebody that he's trying to compete for, for the recognition and the notoriety. He's just like all about, look, I am who I am. And I love my kids, and and that's about it. I'm not, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just moving forward, and I'm, and I'm on from that. And I do believe that. I do believe he wanted to try to make the marriage work, but she was more so wanting to live a different type of lifestyle, and she revealed that from her own lips. She revealed that on the first episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta on this on this season. Because when they were at Cynthia's house and they were discussing marriage and Drew and, you know, Cynthia and Kenya and Latoya were there, she said something along the lines of, oh, she's gonna, you know, she's gonna like turn up and just have her fun, but her and her husband are getting back together. She said that. She said, oh, you know, yeah, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do whatever I wanna do, but you know, me and my husband, we're gonna get back together. I feel like Latoya is, she's still young, she's only 34, and she's been married for, you know, all of these years. It's what, six years. They have all of these children together, and she is the oldest of seven. Well, she's, her parents have eight children, but she has seven younger siblings. I feel like she is looking for, she, she really loves the attention and she's looking for like a second start, like a restart and wanting to really turn up and live a little bit wild and crazy and live that single life. But it's one of those things that doesn't look, from my knowledge, it doesn't, seem like she was a teen mom and you know not like well I I was a mother when I was a teen and and I never really had a life and I didn't get to go out to the clubs and hang out with my girlfriends and do all of these different things and now I want to try to experience you know that life now but it could be there are some people that can't let go of the fact that they didn't get to live a certain type of way but that type of life isn't for everybody. And on these most recent couple of episodes of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, people were asking her, are you going to get something to drink? Are you going to have a drink? Like, cause she's been getting drunk on there. She's been, you know, just acting out. And it's been embarrassing when they were in New Orleans and the, you know, the girls confronted her about how she was acting at Fallon's house. And they were saying, you know, you were disrespectful, you were rude, you were talking about Fallon's husband, like you can't do that. Like pretty much everybody agreed, like, no girl, that that ain't it. It's like she doesn't really know how to conduct herself. It, so it's almost like she's been put into a space that she's not really ready for. And she doesn't even really realize that she's not really ready for it being on YouTube and gaining the followers and the subscribers and all that stuff, that's not easy. I can only imagine, it, it can't be easy. But being on a, you know, a reality show, like on the Bravo network, we're not talking about like she went on the USA network or you know something like that. Like Bravo is like the end all be all when it comes to the reality television networks, right? and to go to be on that top Real Housewives franchise, it's a completely different beast. It really is. And I just don't believe that she was really ready for it. 
she could, you know, she could get ready. It could, you know, wind up working out for her. I don't know, but I just don't really see it for her on this show. I really, I really wish that they wouldn't, I, I, I get it. They got to have some, some drama, maybe a little bit of controversy. They got to have people talking about the show. And, but even honestly, even with her being on the show, at this point it's still pretty boring i do believe that they need to change things up a bit because it's just different i'm not saying because nini leaks is not on the show this season that is why it's boring because i don't believe that and i've talked about a number of times how i felt about nini leaks going after the network and going after the show about it you know about them being racist i don't believe that but i also do believe that all good things do come to an end at some point when it comes to these television shows or the people that they have on the shows. And I was just watching on this past Sunday, um, they were playing some episodes from the very first season. And it, I mean, things are just so different. And that just seems like forever ago. Both Nene Leakes and Kim Zolciak had different faces back then <laughs> and different bodies a little bit. Um, it was just so different. It was just really different. And then even with that, it, it was it was something new, so it was interesting. But the drama that they had on the show, it was looking back on it now, it was so minuscule. It was about a song that Nini sang, uh, you know, talking about Kim. I mean, it was funny back then, but it was like that's what the drama surrounded and saying that Nene was going around talking about people and they, you know, Sheree and Kim didn't want to have anything to do with her or whatever. It was, looking at it back then, that in comparison to Portia saying that Candy had a sex dungeon and, you know, she was going to drug her and and her and her husband were going to have their way with her in their sex dungeon. Like, <laughs> boy, the times have changed, man. I tell you what, but... I digress. I do encourage you if you haven't, if you know you want to subscribe to the Patreon just to listen to that interview because I don't know if she's going to release it on her YouTube channel. She may, but I I listened to the interview and I don't believe that anything that Adam has said has been to destroy his ex-wife's slash mother of his children's character. I believe that he was just being honest and real and he was revealing, you know, some things that just made you sit and think and also may confirm some things about what you have seen about her that she's displayed on either social media, not talking about her YouTube channels, um, but on her social media accounts recently as it involved tweeting or, you know, doing things on Instagram about people on the show or an episode of the show or the upcoming reunion or, you know, things like that. And also just how she's behaving on that show. And it is honestly kind of sad to watch it because I don't really know if she understands the place that she's put her family in and I'll talk about this because I don't believe I'm revealing anything from the interview by talking about this because he's also mentioned this before as well that I believe she sacrificed her family lifestyle in a way for this fame and when it came down to being like an actual part of the show she would have needed her family in order to be that and he did not want to be a part of it. And that wasn't to get back at her. That wasn't on some revenge stuff. That was just like, look, I don't want to be a part of this. So she had no choice but to, you know, take the role of being a friend to the show because there's no way she could be a peach holder and it's just her and she cannot have her family or her children, you know, um, involved on the show. It just would not, it would not have worked out. It's, it's hardly working out for Kenya at this point because whenever she has Brooklyn, the baby with her, her face is blurred out, which I believe is even ridiculous because we already know what she looks like, but that's, you know, that's her current husband slash hopefully soon to be ex-husband on some get back with her. But when it comes to LaToya and the things that Adam Ali revealed in this interview, I do believe that what he has shared 
it will confirm a lot of things about what you're seeing that she is showing about her character and herself on this show. And I do encourage you to, to check out the video. So if you're not on her, her Patreon to, you know, listen to it, go and check it out because it was a very, very good interview. She really did a good job with that interview. He was very calm, collected, laid back, didn't flinch. He even, you know, there were some questions that she asked of him about either her or situations. And he was like, you know what? I don't really want to talk about that. So he definitely was not there to disparage his wife's character or to try to make her look a certain way because he's mad or pissed off or angry about the, the relationship. But you know, there's some people who want to be on her side just because she is a woman or just because they were already a Latoya Ali fan, follower, subscriber, whatever. And you know, then there's some people who are going to be open-minded either way to listen and see and, and gather their own opinions and views. But I'm just sharing mine. I would really love to know what yours are. So hey, if you've listened to the interview of Adam, Adam Ali, let me know in the comment section. And let me know how you feel about LaToya and being on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Do you feel like that's a good fit or do you feel like she's just doing too much and they really just need to go in a different direction and hopefully this is the last time we'll see her on this franchise. I would really love to know what you think, guys. So I appreciate you liking, commenting, and subscribing. And until the next time, I'm just being beautifully honest.